Hey guys, welcome back to Think Making. This is Anton and today I'll show you the basic parts of any Arduino code. To get started, open the Arduino IDE and connect your Arduino to your computer using a USB cable. Now go ahead and open the sample sketch named Blink. In the previous tutorial, I showed you how to upload any sketch to your Arduino. Now you'll learn how the sketch is divided and how it works. First of all, you may have noticed there is text that explains how the code works throughout the sketch. This text is not recognized by the Arduino as code that it needs to run. Due to that, it is set as a comment. To write single line comments, just add two forward slashes before your comment. To write multi-line comments, start it with a forward slash followed by an asterisk and end it with an asterisk followed by a forward slash. Before we start, it is also important to know that every line of the code should end with a semicolon, or if not, you'll receive an error. So, we already know that this code will make an LED on the Arduino board blink in 1 second intervals, but how? Well, there are three main sections in almost every Arduino sketch. The first section is usually where global variables are set. A variable is a piece of code that stores some data and should include a type, a name, and a value. This sketch didn't need any, so this section is not present. Therefore, we'll edit the code and add it ourselves. First of all, to make the code look cleaner, delete the first comment. Then type int LED pin equals 13. And don't forget that semicolon. This creates a variable with the type int named LED pin and with a value of 13. Then change every 13 you see in the code to LED pin. Now click on verify to check you've done everything right. Then hit upload and you'll see the code works exactly the same. The second section is the setup function. It is present in every sketch. This function will only run once after each power up or reset of the Arduino board. It is good to set up one time tasks such as initializing variables setting pin modes, starting libraries, and other things. In this sketch, only the function pin mode is used inside it. This is a function that tells the Arduino if a pin will be set as an input or an output. In this sketch, the function pin mode establishes that LED pin, which is set to 13, will be set as an output. The third and last section of this loop function is also present in every sketch. As the name implies, this function will run in a loop over and over again. This is usually where most of the code is located, and it is good to actively control the Arduino due to that it can change and respond based on the code. This sketch contains the functions digital write and delay inside the loop function. The function digital write creates a digital signal and sends it to a specific pin. This signal can only be set high or low representing high voltage or low voltage. In this sketch, the first digital write establishes that LED pin, which is set to 13, will receive a high voltage, which will turn on the LED. The delay function creates a delay or buffer with a specific amount of time in milliseconds between lines of code. In this sketch, the first delay function creates a delay of 1000 milliseconds before the next line of code is run. What this does is that it enables the LED to stay on for 1000 milliseconds before the next digital write turns it off. After the next digital write turns the LED off, a delay of 1000 milliseconds leaves the LED off for that amount of time. Due to that, it is the last line of code, the loop would restart by turning the LED on once again, then a delay, then off, then a delay, and it would keep going on and on forever. Well guys, that's it for this tutorial. You now know the three basic parts of any sketch. Plus, you've learned how to use the pin mode, digital write, and delay functions. There's a Dropbox link down in the description where you will be able to download the modified version of the sketch in case you run into any troubles. In the next tutorial, you'll learn how to use PWM. So stay tuned and subscribe to Think Making to keep yourself updated. If you found this video helpful, go ahead and smash that like button. If you have any questions or suggestions, go ahead and leave them in the comment section down below. Again, thanks for watching and see you in the next one.